Happy Monday. The law of divine love is the standard for all human actions. Thomas Aquinas. While the psalmist David pens Psalm 3420 and he writes, he keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. He does not have a substantial physical injury at the time. Ultimately, David knows that even if he receives a wound to his body or suffering here on earth, eternity will heal it. David's heart and mind both know no part of his essential self shall be broken. David does not necessarily make a physical declaration, but rather a spiritual declaration. The soul may not be injured in this world. The soul is protected by divine love. God is love. He places his love in you by way of the power of the Holy Spirit when you believe he sent his son for you and you become one in him. God's love watches over every believer just as he watched over his son. God's love preserves every believer just as he preserved his son. God's love protects every believer just as he protected his son. And God's love keeps every believer just as he kept his son in his perfect power. Prophecy begins in the Old Testament. On the night of the last plague, the moment when God delivered the Hebrews out of Egyptian bondage into freedom by way of the blood of the lamb, the command was given for not one bone of the lambs to be broken. Exodus 12 46 reads, it is to be eaten in a single house. You are not to bring forth any of the flesh outside of the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. Jesus, known as the Lamb of God, was crucified on Passover, and by his blood, you and I are delivered out of bondage and into freedom. On the cross, the lamb's bones were not broken. In John 19, 32 through 36, we read, So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other who was crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and in, immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you also may believe. For these things came to pass to fulfill scripture, not a bone of him shall be broken. He had already died. They broke the bones of the bodies on the crosses to, so that they would continue to suffocate and die. But Jesus was already dead, so not a bone was broken. David the psalmist spoke the truth from the scriptures he learned as a young boy. From the beginning, God planned to redeem what was lost in the fall, and his plan was revealed in both the Old and the New Testament words. The Messiah, or the one who would come to save, will be born of a seed of a woman. The Messiah will be an, a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Messiah will descend from the tribe of Judah. The Messiah will be a descendant of Jesse, and thus King David. The Messiah will shepherd his people. The Messiah is anointed and eternal. The Messiah will be born in Bethlehem of a virgin and worshiped by shepherds. The Messiah will be honored by great kings. A way will be prepared for the Messiah. A forerunner will come before him. The Messiah will be declared the Son of God. The Messiah will speak in parables and he will be a great prophet. The Messiah will heal the blind, the deaf, and the lame. The Messiah will be rejected by his own people. The Messiah will not be believed. He will be betrayed by a close friend. The Messiah will be scourged. He will be hated without reason. He will die as the last sacrifice. He will be pierced through his hands and through his feet. He will be given vinegar for his thirst. The Messiah will pray for his enemies. The Messiah will be forsaken by God, and the Messiah will commit his spirit to God. But the Messiah will not have any broken bones. The side of the Messiah will be pierced, and at the moment the Messiah takes his last breath, darkness will fall on the land. But he will not stay dead. The Messiah will be resurrected. God will send the power of the Holy Spirit, and the coming of the Messiah will usher in a new covenant. And the Messiah will sit at the Father's right hand and be sought by Gentiles. But so what? What does this mean for you and me today? 
Since prophecy for the Messiah has been fulfilled by the birth and death of Jesus over 2,000 years ago, it leads us to lean in and trust that God's word is true. We know he is sovereign, so we wait for the end of time prophecies to now be fulfilled. And we wait for his word. In the meantime, we read, Andrew A. Boner's commentary on Leviticus says, The Passover lamb, of which not a bone was broken, prefigured Jesus as one, not a bone of whose body shall be broken. And yet at the same time, it prefigured the complete keeping and safety of Christ's body, the church, as it is written. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. The church is the body of believers. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. So God's divine love watches over the church as he watched over his son. God's divine love preserves the church just as he preserved his son. God's divine love protects the church just as he protected his son. God's divine love keeps the church just as, just as he kept his son in his perfect power for when his son returns as foretold in scripture. Titus 2, 3 says, we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and savior, Jesus Christ. Regardless of what you can see, may your heart know today, God's divine love watches, preserves, protects, and keeps you and me together as one body during these trying times. And if this love is a standard for all human actions today, friends, you may live loved and loved people love people. Students, athletes, parents, administrators, coaches, teachers, teachers, you've got this today because he has you. These words come from God's word. God's word is true. God's word is enough. You are so loved. Happy Monday.